In Surah Baqarah, that is the second surah of the Quran, ayah number 183, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he has made fasting compulsory, obligatory upon all of us. And the reason he gives us is so that we may attain taqwa. Talking about age, our pious predecessors would relate a person's age with how many Ramadan have been there in their lives. So, for example, if a person was 50 years old, they would refer to as, you know, so-and-so has spent 50 Ramadan in his life. And that is basically how Ramadan used to, their, their lives used to revolve around Ramadan. So, like you know most part of the year they would pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah ta'ala um, you know like helps them reach ramadan allahumma balighuna ramadan and then after ramadan they would pray that whatever they have been able to do during ramadan may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it beautifully it's raining uh, remember this slide so uh, this is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers all of us with his, with his mercy, with his rahmah. And throughout the month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is like a heavy, heavy rainfall. So remember that it is the rain which is coming to all of us and it is reaching us, our near and dear ones, all of us. And we are all being showered upon by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And uh, uh, it's not necessary that we are always in the act of ibadah. You will be going to school, you will be doing your assignments, you know, coming and going back on your ways. Uh, you are doing your other uh, routine, everything, no matter what you are doing, you are still un under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, especially during this month. So just fasting itself has so many rewards. So even if you are not in any act of ibadah, you are going to school, you are doing whatever, still you are being rewarded immensely uh, because of this month and because of the fast that you have. Uh, remember uh, the, the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the smell coming out from the mouth of a fasting person more than the smell of musk. And you know, another hadith uh, that uh, for so many things, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us how much reward we will be getting, you know, how many good deeds and how many sins are forgiven and everything. But for fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he himself is the reward. And uh, whoever finds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what else does he or she need? Remember, uh, shaitan is locked up during this month. So um, the hearts are softer and, uh, you know, it's easier for us to do things. And, uh, um, you know, Ramadan is the best time to make or break habits. So this is the very good time to, you know, start something that you have been wanting to start since a very long time or, you know, a bad habit that you want to get rid of. Uh, this will be the best time because one is shaitan is locked up and then because it is Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easier for good things and good habits to start, inshallah. Remember we talked about, um, you know, the, the gate of Jannah, that is the uh, Babur Rayyan, which is meant specially for the people who fast. The five pillars of Islam. At the beginning of the workshop, uh, you remember, um, we did the ayah of uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made fasting uh, obligatory or compulsory upon all of us so fasting is like one of the pillars of islam apart from you know shahada salah saum is the fasting and zakah and hajj so fasting is one of the pillars it is the base the, the foundation on which the rest of the building is built um, we get the rewards of all of the other deeds the good deeds what we whatever we do only when our base is strong and the base has to be strong and intact with the five pillars oh the cupcake slide uh, one of the most favorite slides for most of you um, so when we have the cupcakes the most important thing is the, the base that is the cupcake and this slide 
was there for us to remind to come back to our basics so you know like baking is most important thing and that is the foundation and anything you do upon it you you put the icing you put the sprinkles that will add on to the 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 foundation the basic thing but yes the cupcake initially have to be there so similarly you know whatever we do whatever extras whatever nawafil whatever we are doing it is only beneficial if the farz is done so the farais are like the most important thing which has to be done and upon that we can um, add on as many icing and sprinkles as we want with our nawafil and the other things but the farais have to be done at any cost inshallah remember we talked about um, you know how at school or other places when people get to know that we are fasting they are so surprised that oh you can't even have water not even a drop of water and then um, what happens is sometimes uh, you get into self pity and you are like uh, oh poor me you know we can't even have uh, anything to eat or drink and stuff like that uh, but the thing is that we talked about uh, ourselves that is uh, our being is uh, basically two things and that is the body and the soul the body is seen you know like physical body you can see it and it is made from clay that's the special clay that that is you know basically from dirt earth so all the needs of the body the food clothes house etc are all seen you know you we can physically see them and all of those things come from this earth and this body will one day go back to that earth right now the other thing that we consist of is our soul the soul is not seen and the other thing if you remember that we had talked about is that the soul that we have has come from allah subhanahu wa taala and all its needs also come from above and we cannot you know like understand the soul totally and the needs it has and allah subhanahu wa taala has told us how to feed the soul and uh, you know uh, just like the body needs food and um, the other things the physical things the soul the has requirements which are different and definitely allah subhanahu wa taala has told us what we need for the soul and this fasting and you know the other acts of worship and whatever allah subhanahu wa taala has made compulsory upon of, upon all of us it is the food for the soul and because allah subhanahu wa taala is our rab he loves us so much he has asked us to do it so that we can feed our souls as well and alhamdulillah so much alhamdulillah that allah taala made this fasting compulsory upon all of us otherwise you know so many of us would have gone back to allah subhanahu wa taala you know our souls would have gone back to allah subhanahu wa taala without even being fed once in the entire lifetime so alhamdulillah allah taala made some things compulsory upon all of us so we have to do it so we are able to feed our souls as well nowadays you know there are so many uh, messages and videos and everything um, being shared about the the benefits you know the the medical benefits and the physical aspects of fasting and uh, stuff like that but it is um, you know whenever we get to know those those benefits alhamdulillah we can be happy uh, that allah we have been doing it since since so many years since more than um, you know like 1400 years we've been doing it and it is for us to just remind ourselves how much allah subhanahu wa taala loves us but still when we fast we fast because allah taala has asked us to do it and you know the phys- the physical or the medical benefits as it is we will get it but our niya has to be because allah taala loves it and allah taala wants us to fast and you know it's like a reminder for ourselves that whether we understand anything or not you know the things that allah taala has asked us to do are definitely for our benefits in both this life and the hereafter so any time you know we learn about the benefits of fasting it should encourage and motivate us towards rushing to follow 
what Allah Ta'ala has asked us to do because we definitely know that there is khair in it no matter what. The slide for the litmus test. You remember we talked about uh, litmus test and how we see the pH and we, um, you know, determine with the, whether it's an acid or an alkali and stuff like that. So Ramadan is like a litmus test for our nafs and it is a reflection of our entire year. It is the time when shaitan is chained, it is imprisoned, it is logged, whatever we call it. And it is just us who and our nafs which are there with each other during Ramadan. And then we get to know, you know, how much uh, shaitan has trained us in the sense that shaitan goes on, on a vacation, on a holiday. But then he tries his best to train us and our nafs before leaving. You know, and it is like saying that, okay, I'm going on a vacation or on a holiday. Can you, can you just take care for a month and I'll come back. Don't try. So it is like that. And if we are used to, um, you know, shar and um, the, the sins and everything, then it becomes a bit difficult. But then inshallah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and help, inshallah, all of us will be able to, um, you know, fight those, those, those desires within and we can work it all together, inshallah. Ramadan is like a sample for the following year. If this goes well, then its baraka will impact the rest of the year as well. Remember the first slide when we talked about uh, the, the heavy rain that we are all uh, blessed with during Ramadan? That is the rain of mercy. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers us all with his mercy. And we have to collect that rain. And as we are collecting that, that rain, that showers of mercy, we need to keep our utensils straight upright. And that is the utensils of our heart right so we need to have a clean glass otherwise the things that get collected they will get dirty and of no use so our inside is our heart you know the 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 utensil that is the the glass that we have and we have to prepare our hearts for this ramadan and uh, remember about doing the dishes and stuff like that. So we need to clean our utensils from inside. So clean our hearts before Ramadan so we can actually uh, collect the, the rahmat and the barakah of this month. And we can put it to use for the entire year, inshallah. We have to get rid of the illnesses of the heart before Ramadan and prepare ourselves in the best possible manner inshallah when we are near the finish line you remember uh, even if you are really tired or exhausted what happens is as soon as you see the finish line there is this uh, you know extra energy that just comes within you and you race towards it right and this is like um, you know the the end of it that suddenly there is this extra energy that comes within ourselves and that is the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put Laylatul Qadr in the last um, 10 nights, you know, uh, the, the last uh, odd nights in the 10 nights of Ramadan. A night in which, um, you know, the worship is uh, the, that night itself, Laylatul Qadri khayrum min alfi shahar, that it is better than thousand months. Right. So we as we are collecting the blessings of Ramadan, then comes Laylatul Qadr. And uh, for that, we have uh, we talked about it as to how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends angels. And that is not just any angel. It is the chief of the angels, you know, the, the head of the angels. And that is Jibreel alayhi salam and his VIP delegation that comes down upon the earth and they come for all of us. Right. And uh, especially in Laylatul Qadr, it is our time again to, um, you know, be in the company of Jibreel alayhi salam, the one who has been there for all the prophets. You know, uh, he brought down the Quran. He came to Musa alayhi salam. He was there to save Yusuf alayhi salam. And it is that same Jibreel alayhi salam which comes on the earth on this night that is Laylatul Qadr. 
that is the night to seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and whatever whatever you want just ask him ask him for you know uh, in in the duas that you already know ask him in duas that um you know in just just ask him in your own language in your own words just ask him and whatever you want from him inshallah but remember you know we talked about um cleaning the utensils so even on laylatul qadr some people are not forgiven remember that and who are the people who are not forgiven one of the type of people is one whose heart is not clean and uh, you remember we talked about you know the the race the marathon so we just cannot um, you know uh, start on a race track um, just on the finish goal you know we can we cannot do that we keep sitting for the entire race and then just jump at the end we cannot do that right we have to uh, you know like uh, pass some milestones and if we put our efforts from the beginning then inshallah inshallah we will get to the finish line um, before uh, rather we will be able to um, win the race right and as we come to the finish line uh, you know our we will be renewed with passion and motivation and you know we will have that extra energy uh, inshallah and uh, allah subhanahu has uh, put laylatul qadr you know towards the end of it uh, because we are already in the mood and the mood of ramadan so we can uh, reap the maximum benefits of that night inshallah so in the last 10 nights you know what we can do is uh, read a bit of quran make lots and lots of dua you can uh, you know give uh, charity that is sadqa um, every night and then pray some nawafil do zikr and you remember the cupcake slides so once the 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 cupcakes they are baked you can add as much detail and decoration as you like there is no end to good deeds and um, you know in our deen we are rewarded for even an atom worth of good deed you know wama ya'mal mithqala dharratin khayrain yara so even if you do just just an atom of good deed you will uh, be rewarded for it inshallah so make the most of your time and uh, we talked about you know the uh, incident when the sahaba radiyallahu anhum they asked about the person in the bani israel who had spent um, um, 80 years in his battlefield and then um, you know the rewards that we will be getting will be more than that inshallah and as we finish remember <clears throat> we the way we celebrate is different and it is that we celebrate our things the way allah subhanahu wa taala has asked us to do so during the whole of ramadan uh, we what we actually did was that we stayed away from halal the food and the water that we stayed away from you know the, the drinks or the water that whatever we stayed away from all of it was halal but we stayed away from it because allah taala had asked us to do it now that was a training for all of us and um, you know in a training it is basically that uh, it is a a tough training so the more difficult the job is the more tough the training would be right and if you miss a day or um, two what happens is we are supposed to make it up right so uh, ramadan is like a training for all of us and if we miss then we have to make it up and it is when we make it up then we get the certification and that is the celebration that we we celebrate at the end of ramadan and that is the eid right and that is why uh, in the ayah that allah subhanahu wa subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, ramadan and about fasting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wali tukmilul idda so that you complete the count so we have to complete the count and then we have the graduation ceremony you know the way we celebrate and that is the eid so uh, again just a reminder for all of us that during ramadan our desires were smaller right we you, we wanted to eat we wanted to drink but we did not because allah taala had asked us not to do it right so our desires were smaller and allah subhanahu wa taala was greater right now it is that we have completed that training what have we trained ourselves for is 
that we and our desires, whatever we want, is smaller and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than everything, everything else, right? So now we have been trained that we have to, you know, like base, base our lives on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. You know, we have to lead the rest of our lives the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do. So during Ramadan, we stayed away from halal so that out of Ramadan, we can stay away from haram. That is what Allah Ta'ala has asked us not to do. What Allah Ta'ala has prohibited us. Ramadan is the training for us for the rest of the year that we stay away from the haram. And uh, it is basically that uh, Allah Ta'ala is greater than all our desires, than our, um, you know, any one of us. And that is the way when we celebrate uh, Eid, you know, that is um, with the sighting of the, the Shawwal Crescent, we start with the Takbir. And that is Allah Akbar, that Allah is the greatest. He is greater and we have proven that that he has been greater than our desires than ourselves and that is what we we proclaim in the takbir that is allahu akbar allahu akbar la ilaha illallah allahu akbar right and that is how we are celebrating the end of ramadan ramadan is for us to reconnect to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we can see in this uh, ayah and we talked about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned a passive tense, right? Unzila fihi al-Quran. And uh, in the passive tense, uh, the thing is that the doer is not known. And um, specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not mentioned himself in this ayah. Probably because he wants us to get into the Quran this Ramadan, inshallah. At least this Ramadan, we all can try that we uh, get... Uh, to the Quran, we connect ourselves to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and discover it through the words, like discover it through the Quran, discover it through the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it is indeed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, all of us will try to come out of this Ramadan knowing more Quran than before, being more in love with Quran than before. So um, we started um, the, mm, the workshop with the first ayah that is um, in this ruku, you know, ayah number 183. And then as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ramadan and, you know, the ahkamat of Ramadan and everything. And uh, in between, you know, he talks about وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Right, and uh, then we have talked about that uh, it is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't say that if my servant asks. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned when my servant asks, and that itself is, um, you know, uh, that is a giveaway that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is so sure that we will seek Him, we will ask about Him, and Allah Taala says that He is close. He is really close to all of us. Then the word Sa'alaka is in the past tense, which in, in Arabic language, it is, um, you know, one of the ways uh, when you have to mention, you know, like uh, the certainty of something, then you um, use the past tense. And Allah Ta'ala said Sa'alaka, that itself means that Allah Ta'ala is so sure that we have, we will be doing that. And then Allah Ta'ala says, Ujibu da'wata da'i, that he responds, he answers to the, the call of anyone who calls, you know, the caller. So here Allah Ta'ala did not mention that he uh, answers or he responds to al-muttaqi or mu'min or mu'min or Muslim or anything. He just says whoever calls upon him. So this is the best time, uh, you know, to start our uh, relationship Allah subha with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connect to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through which we will indeed come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the manner in which Allah ta'ala has taught us Surah Fatiha as well that initially he talks about uh, you know whatever he wants us to say and then in between it is a small little dua ihdina surah uh, wa right uh, that we talk to Allah ta'ala and then we ask 
something from him ihdina siratal mustaqim and this is the similar kind of a pattern that allah taala has uh, put over here also when he um, talks about ramadan and fasting and you know the ahkam that is the rulings of fasting and everything and in between he has put um, about um, you know that he responds to anyone who calls upon him so the spiritual power of ramadan is the dua the conversation with allah subhanahu wa taala and let's all all of us uh, build our relationship and renew our relationship and reconnect with allah subhanahu wa taala through his words reconnect with allah subhanahu wa taala in all aspects of our life inshallah